Hi, welcome to Information Communication Technology. The lecture is strictly on exam pattern of engineering services paper one. It all started with the thrust of human being to be faster. So he designed these massive machines to run and compute faster. These results and cases were stored in heap to be used later. This gave birth to information and technology. Later he wanted that data to be remotely used or to transfer it by defying all laws of physics. Definitely, it was communication technology to beat it down. Information communication technology has its massive foundation over the computers. First one is embedded computers. These computers do a particular set of work like TV and washing machine. The second one are programmable computers which can be scheduled for next function like notepads, schedule pads or alarm clocks for suppose. The third one is laptops and personal computers. We all know all about it. Now, the fourth one is workstations. These are the higher versions of the personal computers we are having, having greater memory and greater features or high speeds. The mainframe computers are the business computers which can run multiple computers on a same go. The supercomputers are parallel processors, highly complex problems can be solved over it with a greater range of frequency. Coming up to the next thing we are talking about, the current affairs of the... In 2016 supercomputer conference held in Germany, the China's Sunway Tulite emerged as the fastest supercomputer ever made without US chips. Now, coming up to the next, which is Betty, the United Kingdom's first robot office manager, and Ross becoming the first robot lawyer, Cosmo Robot the first one to respond to human behaviors. If we take down a note over India's supercomputer grid in 2016, the top 500 computers we are having is 139 Indian Institute of Tropical Metrological Department Aditya and 186 being Tata Institute of Fundamental Research TFIR and then 2017 is IIT Delhi's HP Apollo and 337 going to the Param Yuba Indian made computer. It is really information communication technology which is running our lives. All through those wires and frequencies, it gives us facilities like banking. Yes, we make off internet transactions in a click, swipe card and blow cash, or hotwire those international transactions through PayPal or Bitcoin. It is network that is helping us. The next feature is e-governance. This one is quite impressive and important after the advent of Digital India, as it gave new platform for government to interact with everyone. E-governance really made connection between citizens and government to have their grievances solved online. It got connected business authorities to government to initiate online tendering for transparent progress. It got connected his own employees to facilitate them to facilities like salary from treasury or Jeevan Praman. It got interlinked its own branches for a faster process of servicing. Taking up some current affairs in field of e-governance, Bharatnet National Optical Fiber NAOF is renamed in 2014 under Digital India program. Its aim was to connect rural areas with internet. eSangam, a new application, gave multiple mobile services of government under one platform. As for medical facilities, education, information of taxes or job growth opportunities. Jeevan Praman being the biometric verification of pension takers to ease problems of senior citizens. My government, the biggest citizen government interaction platform, started in 2014. An update is now available 2.5 government launched in year 2015. The last but not the least is Mobile Seva which was launched in 2012. It was to bring multiple services available in mobile through app or messages. It is renowned in two phases. Number one is push SMS when government interacts to people and number second is pull SMS when citizen requests to government for any of the support. The last one is a pool of opportunities and items. Sales and purchase has never been that easy for both seller and buyer. It connected the best even from the remote locations and really gave value to valuable. Now it was aimed for UNESCO to provide education for all. ICT made it a lot more easier with its distance education program and e-learning platforms. As for example, I am teaching you ICT through ICT using YouTube as a platform. Same way smart classrooms and digital libraries have changed the dimension of old rusty books to short digital notes. Now talking about e-government of India taking up to the ICT as a knowledge level. Niti Aayog welcomes new ideas through online platform. Anunet is a link of Atomic Research Center for Indian students. Garud is a grid of supercomputers helping knowledge base. Naptel is a digital library for education in which online lectures and online books are available. EduSat is a social network of teaching and communication. 
fantasies of benefits are over. Now it's time to jump into the pool and get it known to the realities of technology. It is basically divided into two rules. One wired and other is wireless network. Wired network making a complex grid of computers and ISP providers. Data centers all connected to RJ415 which means LAN cable. A wireless network is all that goes in here, being it a Wi-Fi hotspot or your small Bluetooth or massive Loom technology currently working under Google in Sri Lanka. The wired network is further divided into LAN and wire. LAN signifying to local area network where all computers in a small place, either a building or small towns are connected via 4 to 6 pairs of copper wires. This can't be long enough as copper losses need amplification from time to time. To reduce these losses, we used optical fiber cables thinner than a single strand of your hair. These cables were exceptionally fast and good enough to connect whole country into a broadband of wide area network. Moving further to wireless network, we had satellite communication towers free from the boundaries of wires. Over the frequencies and bandwidth, these gave satellite signals, D2H and mobile service providers. Mobile and wide area network both are currently providing high speed internet with a blazing response time. About internet, it is a network of laptop, workstations, data centers connected through those routers, hubs and modems. All those are communicating over those satellites in a selective bandwidth. Let me give you an example of basic working of an internet. Internet in our screen comprises of a URL which is Uniform Resource Locator inscripted by a transfer protocol. Every website we write down is HTTP hashtag www dot website name the domain name. As for the example, we are having www.pdfr.com or www.fp representing facebook.com. The URL had an old set of representation which were numbers like 124.246.154. For proper naming and easy to remembrance, we converted the URL name to a string operation like fb.com which is a lot more easier to remember. www represent World Wide Web which was invented by Tim Berners-Lee and PDF Art is the website name extended by a .com which is a domain name. The alternate domain names are co.in, .in, .org or .net. Uniform Resource Locator is just an address of the data center where our website is rerouted or hosted. The internet we are using right on our screens is delivered to us by internet service providers commonly known as ISP. The first internet service provider of this world was ARPANET of USA. Advanced Project Research Agency was initially initiated for military use only. Later on it got commercialized. It was the first company to bring packet switching and provide internet to every person. It was the first company to provide email also through hotmail services. It gave TCP IP means transmission control protocol and internet protocol model to the internet. This protocol method gave user a satisfaction that the format and the files they are sending on the internet will be received by the user on the original format they were created. Now internet layer TCPI protocol model contains five layers. First one is application, transport, network, data link and physical. These all five layers ensure security of data even if it was segregated into different packets and addresses. Talking about mobile technology, we have CDMA that is Code Division Multiple Access mostly used in USA. You can't change the subscriber in the mobile phone changed to WCDMA as W referred widened bandwidth of the user. TDMA and GSM referred from Time Division Multiple Access to Global System of Mobile Communication. You can change SIM cards in this and also change the subscribers over it. Now, the coming up to Edge and HSPA, it is enhanced data rate for GSM evolution and high speed packet access, the advancement to older technologies only, this led to reduction of the data losses and improved internet speeds and network connectivity. The generation advancement in mobile technology started in 1981 with Japan as a launch of 1G. It was over circuit switching, FDMA, frequency division, multiple access, there were no SIM cards, only cell phone issued by the cellular companies, no internet access, only voice calling and messaging. In 1991, Finland started 2G which switched on to packet switching and CDMA, TDMA. SIM cards were started to flow down in the market and internet access was there but at a very low speed. Better calling and network connectivity was in 2G. In 2001, Japan again made a concept of 3G that was HSPA, widened CDMA and widened TDMA. HSPA evolved, also was there, improved data connectivity, higher internet speed, new 3G SIM was issued for the higher frequency working. In 2007, South Korea invented 4G WiMAX. 
which was wireless microwave access hspa evolved high speed but in low range ofdma which represented orthogonal frequency division multiplexing access it uses the biggest range of frequency ever in 2009 sweden and norway invented 4g light long term evolution all the features of wimax were present there but it was for the longer range and better compatibility with other networks 5g is under consideration and under research and development it will be coming in 2019 as approximated okay friends i have covered as much as i can over the short notes in information communication and technology next notes will be on computer structures and current affairs over cyber security Till then hit like stay subscribed and tune to short notes thank you